So the supplies you're going to need to put the foot ring on to the bottom of your bowl include a little handful of clay, your needle tool, your wooden smoothing tool, and your container with slip in it. I made some fresh this morning and it's just starting to look kind of nice right now. But if you made yours earlier, it may be really nice and goopy like it is in here. And it may start looking kind of like icing. That's going to be your glue. So the point of the foot is the foot keeps the bowl off of the table. So it keeps this bottom part of the bowl off of the table. In the case of a soup bowl, it would mean that your hot bowl doesn't touch the wood of the table. Or in the case of this, which is a little planter, it keeps this from touching the bottom of the, the dish where the water drains in. So there's lots of reasons to put a foot on the bottom of your bowl. I'm going to teach you the basic foot ring, but a foot can really look any way you want it. You can be very creative about it. We're going to start by taking this small handful of clay and compressing it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to roll it into a coil, just like I did for the spoons, using the flat part of my hand. And when I think it's big enough to go around the bottom and create a foot, I'm going to test it out. And I'm going to test it out by placing it on the bottom of my bowl and seeing if this bottom of the bowl is actually going to touch the table or not once the foot has been attached. And I can see that this is lower than this side of the foot. So I actually have a good ring. There's a little cracking there. I'm going to just apply a little water. And then, you know what, I've made it just the right length. But if I'd made it too big, I could cut off these edges so that it joins nicely. And I think I will cut off just a tiny little bit so that it really does hold this up off the table. I don't want it so small, I'm going to put that in my slip bowl there. I don't want it so small that it's not stable, right? So I'm kind of trying to find that nice balance between keeping it off the table and not being unstable. And then what I need to do is I need to decide, is this in the right place? Like, do I like the placement of the foot ring on here? Does it look good? And if it does, then I'm ready to start attaching it. You want to keep in mind things like symmetry. You don't want your bowl foot to be off on the side like this. You don't want it to be too small. You don't want it to be too big. So you want it to be just right. And when you've decided that it's in the right place, let's use the needle tool to kind of sketch where it should go on the bottom of your bowl. So that when I remove the needle, when I remove the foot, I know where it's supposed to go. Now what I'm going to do is from the, from the outside of this ring, I'm going to start making little score marks. This is the score part of score and slip. And I think of this kind of like two sides of Velcro. Both sides, when you use Velcro, both sides are kind of sticky and ruffled up. And that's what I'm doing for the clay that's going to be joined to and the clay that's joining. So a smooth surface of clay will not join to itself. By ruffling it up, I'm making it ready to accept the slip and getting ready to join. Okay, so let's get some slip and let's apply it to the ring. And then let's apply a little more to the bowl itself. I'm going to fill in those holes there but not smooth them out. And then I'm going to put my foot ring on. And I'm going to compress it. So I'm pressing it into the bowl. I'm adding pressure. Not so much pressure that I squish my bowl, of course, but enough pressure so that this ring is going to stay onto this bowl when it goes into the kiln. So what I want to make sure and do now is join the inside of this ring to the bowl so that there's no chance that it's going to come off when it goes into the kiln. And I'm just taking a little bit of clay from the inside of the ring and smoothing it in with my wooden tool. I can also take my paintbrush. You see I've made it all kind of messy in here. I can take my paintbrush and I can smooth all of those marks away if I can't fit my finger in there.
And then if I have a little hole like I have here where the two pieces join together, I'm going to take some of this really soft, slippy clay. It's really soft and squishy. And I'm just going to add that on there. And kind of patch that little area that needs patching. You'll notice that I didn't score and slip that. I didn't need to because that clay was so soft. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this piece alone until it's become leather hard. And I'm going to leave it uncovered for a couple of hours. That'll do the trick. And then I'll be able to, to smooth it. I'll be able to start carving it. I'll be able to add on to it. I'll be able to flip it over and make sure that it's looking as good as it possibly can.